Rod. We are going to start the first of our two-part Best of T-Rod specials, where we take a look back at some of our awesomest guests that have graced the T-Rod carpet. Yup, the ones that went through so much pain on our show. Yes, the one we call Tomboy T-Rod. And mind you, it's not pronounced tirade or tirade, but T-Rod, the way we like to say it, on this no holes barred fortnightly podcast with a whole load of geek drama and humour thrown into every episode. Yes, and we are Asia's biggest and only all-female English comedy chat podcast. You're right, we are 50 shades of awesome, all that, and a bag of chips and more. That's right, and we're here in the Tomboy T-Rod Time Machine, where we're skimming through time to pick out the best of the best from the 50 so episodes we've done so far. Man, this hell of a lot of episodes. How did you even last that long? <laughs> Viagra and lots of crystal meth. That's right, the fake ones. Now buckle up, Raven. I'm about to push this start button on the show. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, Captain! Alright! Three, two, two, one! Let's go! go! have as our first victim, uh, uh, I mean, guest. Well, she's hot, sexy, and gets to travel all around the world hosting television shows. Oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. Is it Mishka, the talking Siberian husky? I mean, she speaks so well, she probably has her own TV show. Jeez, of course not. I'm talking about a human being, not a dog. Oh. Sorry. I'm talking about Anita Kapoor, you idiot! Oh yeah, right. Anita Kapoor! It's Yay! Anita Kapoor! Yay! Yay! Hello everyone! Oh. Guys, Hello. I am very, very honoured to be part of the T-Rod. Yes, not tirade. Know, uh, not not tirade, right? No. Yeah, because that's the way we like to say it. T-Rod. T-Rod. But I guess it's just the way that the word is spelt. But whatever the mm-hmm. hell, I'm happy to be with you guys. I've just gotten <laughs> off a plane. <laughs> Uh-huh. And we're on our way again. Yes, because we, we all of us are going to Myanmar this time to shoot a very exciting uh, show, aren't we? Yes, Anita? we are. Um, you guys are it's packed cold. and ready, but I have to basically mm-hmm. take the clothes that I haven't washed after my <laughs> my last week, which I spent, as you guys know, in Mumbai. So who's doing my laundry? I thought it was going to be those people. You, what? You didn't leave your laundry with the guys in, in Dobby Mumbai? Gar? Yeah. <laughs> <What's the> whole- <laughs> Clearly. I don't know I think my it's... dirty laundry on the show. <laughs> I honestly I think we need to change the name of the show that we're going to do in in um, in uh, Myanmar. We need to change it to I don't know, the laundry ladies or something. <laughs> the laundry ladies. Now to get to my new highlight of the week, and first out is the Oscar results. What do you guys wow. really think? Actually, it's not really can about I, the results, can I, can I right? Say, can I just say, I, I, I didn't see anything. I saw, okay, mm. I read the Oscars <laughs> via Twitter because I was getting on a plane <laughs> so and I. coming back. Yeah. So I read everything. I didn't get to see it. I was just too busy doing other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hello, but who was actually even airing it? 
There was nothing on the free channels. No. I, did you watch it, Raven? No, I actually did. <laughs> I only watched bits and pieces online. Those, I, those video before they take the yeah. Okay, can I just say? Yes. Jared mm, Leto. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> There were paparazzi waiting outside of my house this morning. I, I, I don't know if just to kind of celebrate the day with me or to find out who, who else was I was sleeping with. Right. But, uh, 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 you know, I got in, I think, at the cross of dawn last night, if you can say that. Uh, maybe 6 o'clock, 5.30. Uh, Did you say it, guys, until 6? Don't feel sorry for me. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what did Alan say that he was like the prettiest one sitting in the audience? Yeah. He was the prettiest one. But I bet you he has a really white, pasty body. He looks and like a freaking guy. white, pasty ass. Yeah, who doesn't get a lot of sunshine, but yeah. he takes a lot of time with that hair. Yeah, and no, it's that soft <laughs> voice, you know, and I was thinking, oh my god. Which could also be that of a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Dallas Killers Club. Okay. <laughs> When I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, i got to think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. <laughs> so I turned 25, 10 years later. That same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. No, no, no. She said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero's always 10 years away. I'm never going to be my hero. I'm not going to attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. And, uh, there was, okay, there was a lot of flack in the, in the media about Matthew McConaughey's winning speech. There was yeah. this guy who actually thought, there was this reporter who actually said that, oh my God, McConaughey, you know, his acceptance speech was just so self-indulgent. How arrogant was he? And, um... I thought, actually, he, he, I mean, for a guy who, who, who looks at himself as a hero and is chasing that dream, I didn't see anything wrong with it, but he pretty much got a lot of negative press about his speech. I don't know, though. man. You know, I don't understand this whole process at all. Mm -hmm. You just you won just a friggin' Academy Award. I think That's you can right. fucking say whatever you like yeah. without everyone jumping on it and trying to interpret what you really meant. <laughs> and none of these people even know this guy. It's like, remember when James Cameron won and That's he said, right. I'm the king of the world. Right. I, I'm yeah. sure he didn't mean that he was the king of the world. Yeah. But, you know, people jumped on him and thought, oh my God. And then he was like dirt for years, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I also think it has a lot to do with its perception and reality kind of converging. There may be mm -hmm. people who actually do know this person yeah. and they might be an asshole, who knows? <laughs> and now they're an asshole in a tuxedo on stage That's with right. a gold statuette. Mm -hmm. But McConaughey has never come across to me. I mean, I, although, you know, it's not like we're best friends or anything mm -hmm. we don't both run topless down many beaches across the world um, but you know he's although never... you wish you did <laughs> with Jared Leto in between yes yes Jared Leto with his hair flying behind like <laughs> like all those Timote advertisements from oh, the 70s God. oh um, no no but I kind of feel like you know what the hell are we actually doing this is the thing I mean and Raven and I had a conversation about this before why does everybody take offence at almost everything these days because everybody Everybody thinks they know everyone and they really don't. And it's not that. Everybody thinks they have the right idea of what the world should be. A preconceived idea of when it is not just your world, it's everybody else's world. And, and all this self-indulgence, mm -hmm. all this social media. I have a, f a couple of friends in America and lately there was all this big brouhaha about, you know, uh, should we call ourselves black? Should we call ourselves African American? Should we call ourselves uh, the N word? Uh, now you cannot say the N word, but then now some people think the black word is also offensive, and then some people think the African American word, which is a politically correct term, is now also pretty offensive.
friends who have come to our second guest. And she's Malaysia's favorite comedian. Is that me? Uh, I think you're stretching it there a little too far, Persis. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Joanne Kam. Oh, yeah. Going by her stage Monica, Joanne Kampopo, Joanne is one of the funniest and best loved comedian on the Malaysian stage with her girl power and acid tongue brand of humor. Since her big break in the legendary Boom Boom Room on both sides of the causeway, she has established herself as a comic with attitude and character, complete with fabulous costumes. For the past decade, she has been pushing the comedy envelope while being actively involved in the local television, theatre and stand-out scene. And we were privileged this year to catch up with her Supercom 3 show in Pataling Jaya, Malaysia and have her on the show last year. And boy, did things get really wet around here. Italian man once a long time ago in Changkat because my girlfriend said everything like spaghetti, I so happy lah. So I go already, I bring back, I buka buka sekali macaroni. <laughs> Meatballs also don't have. Hala <laughs> there. Girls, if it's macaroni, please give 50 ringgit, ask him take taxi, go home. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, seriously, cannot feel anything when don't bother. Okay, do we have any Frenchmen in the house? Frenchmen? Frenchy poo? Where the Frenchy poo? Ooh, hello Frenchmen. You know the Frenchmen, they don't have to do anything. Eh? They don't even have to touch you, you know. They talk talk you down there water fountain already. <laughs> Serious, my one like Joho flooding like that. If he touch me, there'll be tsunami. Ah, eh? <laughs> oh, that's why. Eh? Do we have any Filipino men around here? Filipino? Filipino? Oh, they're all working. Okay. It's been a month since the Fifty Shades of Grey trailer has been released. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the book. <laughs> High five. Because, High five, yeah. man. But I did buy it because uh, another friend of mine was so insistent <clears throat> that I bought it and, you know, she's like so gaga over it. Yeah. And, and I read till chapter 3 or 4 and then I got bored because yeah. you must understand in our age we have Sydney Sheldon yes yay <laughs> and, and that's what Robbins. we tell you exactly and their characters do hell of a lot more, more. than this grey fella you know so this is just an interview for the newspaper I just have a couple of questions Mr. Grey will see you now What was he like? He was polite, intense, smart, really intimidating. I don't do romance. My tastes are very singular. You wouldn't understand. Enlighten me then. Perhaps it's for this new generation, the toilet generation that that is growing I up. I thought you said wants... toilet generation. <laughs> no, twilight, okay. twilight. You know, Breaking Dawn, Twilight, yes. Vampire, Werewolf. So if you cater to that, um, those type of, uh, I mean, the people who would buy the kind of books. Mm. And if you notice, the heroine is always someone playing. Yes. Mm. It's never this gorgeous diva no. who's like, a superstar yeah. or singer she's playing yeah. i mean she's she's if she was in asia mm-hmm. she would be like an alien yeah. you know like 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 someone working in the i don't know in the, ta- very in, the that, uh, in the power shop or something like that right <laughs> yeah something like that normal oh, yeah. and yeah and i guess that's why the book just exactly like twilight and breaking down works so well because we girls are always insecure about our Yeah, books. and it's a mm-hmm. you know, and the, fan fiction, right? Yeah. So it was yeah, Twilight and fan fiction. the guys are like super hot yeah. and super gorgeous. I mean, honestly, mm. if you look at Bella and you look at Robert Pattinson, mm-hmm. everybody is like, oh my God, Bella's so ugly. <laughs> but that's the whole appeal, the fact that a guy this hot mm. could fall mm. 
for a girl this simple yeah. and it is the same concept mm-hmm. with 50 shades of gray the only thing is because it is made for the older girls yeah. the older generation mm-hmm. that has finished your four to five books on the vampire and werewolf series now they want something yeah. more I think the girl is okay, but I think the guy is pretty lame because I think he... I mean, I he know. should just appear on the next season of Silicon Valley and have bondage sex uh, <laughs> with a computer mouse or something. Seriously. It yeah. doesn't even look like Christian Grey. Not at all. I, I thought they were going to cast Ian Summerhalder from Vampire Diaries because I yep. think he's so much better, people, right? Yeah. A lot of people had that. But then again, if you look at Hollywood, they never really cast the people that really yeah. want. I mean... <laughs> Look at Batman, Ben Affleck. I mean, honestly, oh and even God. when we talk about interview with a vampire, a lot of people say Tom Cruise, really, Tom Cruise. <laughs> like, even the author didn't want Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise, you know? I always believe in giving movie the chance until it's really bad. Then you're like, why? Like, for example, Transformer, why? <laughs> why? Why, you know? Why? Even, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, even Marky Mark couldn't save it. Mm. You know, why? Marky you Mark, know? you still remember him as Marky Mark? Yes, I, he will forever <laughs> be Marky Mark. <laughs> you know, I mean, he could play a better Christian Grey, I presume. <laughs> So Raven, what do you think? I mean, you've been pretty mum about this whole thing and um, have you read the book? I tried reading it, but I only got past like the first chapter. I was bored. Come on, we all brought up with more, like, you know, more in the 90s. We were growing <laughs> up in school reading books under our tables. Yeah, <laughs> Scandalous yeah. books under yeah. our table as our teacher taught like, you know, teachers boring chemistry lessons. Yeah. But you know, so you grow up reading Scandalous stuff and then you read this and you see the trailer. I was like, it's so mild. I don't get excited at all. I mean, and then, I don't know, because like, I was watching one of the videos for ABC, they were introducing the trailer yeah. with the actors, and they cut off the last five seconds. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and then, so the only me, best was just part. too ugly. <laughs> You really got me going You got me so I don't know what I'm doing Oh yeah You really got me now You got me so I don't know what I'm doing Oh yeah You really got me so You got me so I can't sleep at night You really got me You really got me You really got me so guests in this first part of the Best of Tirad compilation episode. And who is it? It's Cheryl Chana. Woohoo! Yes, who is possibly Singapore's funniest woman, and she's taking Asia by storm with her razor sharp wit and spot on comic timing. Now, we're big fans of Sharul's no holds barred comedy and her gung ho attitude. Um, she's a regular on the local stand-up comedy circuit here in Singapore and she's determined to pursue her passion in an industry where female comedians, let alone Asian female ones, are few and far between. Her drive to entertain has taken her beyond the shores of Singapore and overseas, including in Malaysia where she was part of the Supercom 3 show where we also managed to catch up with her as well. Oh, that was a fun episode! Full of snakes though, but still a fun episode! <laughs> yeah. You'll see what we mean when you listen to this. Yes, I mean, they say that Caucasian people are racist, but that's not true. That's not true. And I'll leave you with it. That's not true. Indian people are the most racist people around the world. They are. Because when I went back to my village in India, all my relatives had given English names to their dogs. Jimmy. (laughs) Tommy. Antoine. Once they have a dog that has an Asian name, yeah, you know, I've never <laughs> seen that. It, it, you, know? you know, it's really terrible. It's like when I when 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 Rishi picked up uh, the puppy for me, uh, yeah. the only reason she was the only one left uh, among all her her, uh, her siblings was um, because she was a brown dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I was like, shit, I can't. Like, Racist. It, it, I think Rishi was thinking like, I can't let another brown dog go through this, and he picked up like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, What's her name? Her name is I've got, I've given her an Indian name. You see, there you go. Like, uh, it's an it's her name is Meaty, 
which is okay. like sweet in Hindi. Okay, hmm. nice. But, but honestly, what, honestly, <laughs> so what ladies and gentlemen around the world listening to this podcast, if you want to, <laughs> you know, visit the world's first Asian named dog, <laughs> it's called like, Sharu. She's got one, you know. Yeah. World's first, <laughs> let me tell you. Obviously, my Chinese friends, right, when they come in, they're like, ah, oh, you name her Miti. Like, oh, she's so skinny. What do you mean she's Miti? I'm like, no, no, you're very fat yeah. now. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, 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 you got to understand it. So. Uh, because she's, she's got no class, you know, she's not <laughs> Percy or Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> about you know having a complex of uh, you know the indian mother complex i remember that you you had a couple of jokes yeah on stage yeah and you even wrote something on a blog about the the, the indian mother complex and there's a lot of that running in the dna of your jokes and yeah. you know off stage and on but yeah I, I think it's really funny and i wanted to talk to you about it um uh, i just think that um uh, there's a there's a general flaw in the way um certain cultures bring up their kids and uh, it, it's just that they don't know any better, and what happens is yeah. that it kind of sticks with you. But you've been you've you've grown up like <laughs> hearing really odd stuff, and and you you can't you, when you ask them they don't want to give you a reasoning for it. Like why did you say that? Oh uh, no, just shut up and listen to me. So you yeah. know, like when when I was writing jokes, it's like you know I want to write about things that never made sense to me because I mm-hmm. know there are other women mm-hmm. going like oh like, I feel retarded like why am I doing this shit you know. And I said, I'm going to yeah. bring it out and I'm going to, I want to connect with these women out there who feel the same, like Asian women. I want them to, to know yeah. that they're not alone. Mm-hmm. Like things like, you know, um, I, I know once my mom told me like, uh, like I just lifted my ass and farted once. <laughs> I mean, many, many times, like not once, but many times. And my mom's like, oh my God, who's going to marry you like that? Like, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I'm like, dude, I'm going to fart into yeah. his mouth if I get married to him. Like, that's what I'm going to do. When he's sleeping, I'm going to sit on his face. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I, that's the kind I mean, of like, fuck. Yeah, what, what can you do? Put a huge, big band-aid on your ass before you <laughs> let one go or what? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I'll, find I think a, generally, I'll find to an air balloon or something. Like. But I also think it's an Asian, Asian mother thing, isn't it? It's yeah. not just Indians. No, I think, no, no. I think Chinese... Chinese moms also have their own shit going on, yeah, you know, yeah. when it comes to, like, you know, controlling their daughters yeah. and stuff, you know, like, oh, you better listen to me if not, I'm going to throw you out in the garbage, you know, yeah. Yeah, you're the you're the girl, I'm going to throw you out if you don't oh. do this, you know. Oh, in my case of my mom, she threatens me by, well, that's probably not, I'm an adult, but when I was a kid, she always threatened me, like, if I don't behave myself, I'll be, you know, chopped out and cooked in curry. Oh. <laughs> And then I later I found out there that was that a real curry murder. There was a real curry murder I thought for the longest Singapore, time, I thought it was yeah. like, he's joking. Like, you know, oh, I didn't really think, like, oh yeah, you don't behave, I will <laughs> catch you, I'll throw in a pot, I'll cut you out, and you'll uh, be cooked in curry. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I think there it was, was like, like the Whoa. whole gamut. It's the uh, po- you know I'll take you and send you to the police, or oh, yeah. I will I will send you to work in a factory. <laughs> it was all these horrible threats, you know. I mean, like wow, I didn't know. Like growing up, you would think that you grew up in in Sicily with a mafia or something because, <laughs> and it, you know, the, yeah. it's, it's really odd because and, and and the thing is that it's just that they, they don't know better, right? It's not it, yeah. it's because they've grown up with the same shit and they're just on repeat mode. They think that. It works. That's right. Yeah. Mm. It's about like, you know, it, it, it's always like, it is what it is. Do not yeah. question me, right? Yeah. 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 Mm. And speaking about kids, you, you have a kid yourself, right? Huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't? No, I don't have a kid. That's my sister's kid. Oh, Oh, because I saw you, saw, saw you posing a lot on, on like with babies and stuff. I said, "Wow, she's doing it all." <laughs> no, 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 dude, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm. Uh, <laughs> it was wrong. Yeah, okay. It's all right. It's all My right. My bad. Um, I just, yeah. I just, uh, do, do I look, do, do I look fat? Is that what it is? Just tell me, first. tell me, I'm a fat person. But, it, but it's a great publicity stunt, though, Charlotte. Yeah, I'm give it to you. it's great publicity For stunt. For what? It helps me in no way. Like guys don't hit on me anymore. It's just like my life is going down the fucking drain. They probably think I have a baby now. Like, oh shit, that's what it is. Look, that, that's the only way to get guys to pay attention to you. Okay, uh, just borrow somebody's baby and then you know go around town in a buggy with it. You know, like. <laughs> Dude, dude, uh, fuck. Would you like to date me, you know? Uh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to be buying you beers. Total mommy material, yeah. <laughs> so, 
You know, and Auntie Sunita, she, she's a bit crazy. She's, a, she's crack. When I was going to, to St. Margaret's in Convent School, she came to me and like, you're going to a convent school. You're going to a convent school. Make sure you don't become lesbian. Make sure you don't become lesbian. But if you do, make sure she's Indian. <laughs> and we are backstage here with one of Singapore's funniest comedians, uh, Sharu Chana. Yay! Yay! Awesome. Okay, before we go on stage, I'm <laughs> four flat on our faces. Because okay, and I decided that we are going to go on stage after Sharu. <laughs> We're just going to ruin it for you. Because we have to be that thick skin, you know, to go up. Go out on stage after a professional comedian to like, make a <laughs> fool of ourselves to do our Tom White Tira act. Yeah. So, if it ever gets off. <laughs> yeah, if it ever gets off. Let's just talk about Asian women in comedy. Like, so, Cheryl, what do you think the scene is like? Uh, for women? Or yes. Generally? Um, I think, uh, and like any other job, this is a very uh, male dominated industry, I would say. Um, so it, it, it takes a lot for Asian women to jump up on stage because, you know, not known to. Uh, to come up there and be funny, right? Yeah, yeah it's a, yeah. like I mean, that's that's how it's like the stigma. It's it's just like um, when you go up, Asian women tend to be very shy about their, uh, you know, not all of them, but there is a, a certain percentage. They're very shy about their sexuality. They're very coy mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. very <laughs> very you know, or at least uh, around their friends they're fine. But you know. It's not something for an Asian woman to jump up on stage. It's it's not her. It's not in her nature to do that, or the way that she's been portrayed to be. A typical yeah. Asian woman would be sitting with her friends, and every time she even laugh. I've seen so many women, uh, Asian women, they would cover their face when they laugh. Yeah, why did they do that? Yeah. I don't understand. It's it, not like they're worried about spreading some kind of germs. <laughs> <laughs> germs or is it like they're scared that they've got such bad breath after eating that you know garlic tofu or something yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's just it's just the fact that oh uh, you know it, it stems like it's psychologically I think it stems from the fact that they feel that oh am I allowed to laugh out this loud you or know? even have a voice so yeah uh, you know um, uh, I, I think and but you see the, the, the weird thing is individually all these women are very um very successful in their own careers and they, mm-hmm. they know exactly what they want. They are very, mm-hmm. very strong. But the moment yeah. they come into a group setting uh, yeah. and to come up on stage, there's, yeah. some, there, there's, there's a phobia. Because it is not, it's not normal. It's not a normal yeah. thing to do. Mm-hmm. And, and plus to, to go up on stage and then make a claim that you're funny, oh, it's yeah. just, it's a lot to live up to. It is, it, it is. is. There's always uh, this possibility that when you fall flat on your face, how yeah. do you, yeah. you know, pick yourself up, you know, dust the, the dust off your shoulders and get back up on the horse, right? It's yeah. a bit yeah. it's a bit daunting, I think, for yeah. a lot of Asian women and, to do that. And also like being on stage, for me, right, it feels like being naked on stage. It's like Yeah, a lot yeah, of people say that. It is. Yeah, it's like hanging out there with your tits and your ass. Yeah, it's like hanging out, and out like... my vagina hanging out <laughs> to the world. Hey look, look at me. I'm trying to make I'm trying to date everybody in the room. Yeah, sorry, Raven. You got two two sexual organs, so you'll be having two sexual organs yeah. on display on stage. Yeah, that's why I'm a bit confused, but <laughs> it, it is it is literally like it, it, it's like showing a room full of men and women your yeah. your stretch marks. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, you know, and telling them that you know what, I have these stretch marks uh, behind my back, and I I just want to let you guys know that, that they are there. So for women, it's it's it is more. I feel it's difficult because a um, the men are judging you, right? Yeah. B, yeah. the women are judging their men. Yep. And watching their men judge you. And then and the, the men, yeah, yeah. And the men doing it themselves as well. Exactly. Yeah. So, so there's so much, um, so much happening there. And, um, and, and when you go up there, in, in a minute, you have to let them know that it's not about the way I look, it's about what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of women tend to fall back on sex jokes. Yeah. Um. Whereas, like, when you see male comedians, um, it's not just about talking about their dicks and their penises and stuff, but they also talk about other stuff. Yeah. But I notice when it comes to women, right? They they really take the Mickey out of their own sexuality. Do you think there's a reason for that? Yeah, because you see, when you first start out, um, when 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 generally people do start out doing mm-hmm. comedy, whether they're male, uh, male or female. Uh, the, it, it's generally easier to, to sort of get the audience to laugh uh, with sex jokes. I don't think sex jokes are easy, but it's yeah. easier to sort of write because that they can yeah. get an immediate response from the audience. 
But yeah. you can't do that more more than five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So we, after that, it's just gonna. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So after five minutes, the audience is like, "Okay, we we get the point. We get we the get point. the point. Yeah. yeah. Move on. You know. And that's when, as a comedian, you realize that shit. I got to write material that is mm-hmm. my truth. It's about who I am, and yeah, how was it when I was growing up? What I like, what I don't like. Observations. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah, people should should acknowledge that like, I'm a woman. But yeah. uh, and then, you know, move on mm-hmm. and talk about probably the nationality, talk about mm-hmm. other stuff. Um, yeah, and it, it tends to happen a lot, but it's a process. Some yeah. comedians get stuck in the process of doing sex jokes. Some of them go a little bit higher and dig, not higher, but dig deeper in themselves and say that now I want to talk about myself. Yeah, but the problem with yeah. Asian comedy and women in Asian comedy is that if you guys go to the notice, you if, if you see any Asian Asian female comedians. Yeah. Um, on TV in India, or like maybe even Chinese, or even even Channel Five, if you, if you saw yeah. many of many of the comedians were female, were fat. Yes, Lydia Sam, you know, uh, was was a very famous yeah. one, right? Uh, living with Lydia. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We just want you to try and tell us if you like it. But if I really like it, and I cannot afford to buy it, what should I try? How much? <laughs> Never mind. No need to try. Thank you. <laughs> At the end of the day, whether you're a man or woman, um, it the whole it all boils down to being fat. That's, That's right. right. If you see yourself as a female comedian, then you'll always treat yourself as a female comedian. Yeah. If you treat yourself as a stand-up comedian, then they'll always watch it. It's a stand-up comedy act. Then then they won't care if it's a man or woman, right? Yes. True. Uh, yeah, but, because uh, I think it's it, at the end of the day, it's all about: Are you funny or not? Yes, because mm. maybe I see myself. I, I don't see myself as a woman or a, or a man anymore. I I just see myself as a person. Yeah, just a funny oh, person. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. see, persons, we should just stay on being fifty fifty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's a good thing. You got yeah. yeah. So we are the people of the world. We are not a man. We're not global, a woman. global yeah. community. Oh, yeah. thanks a lot. Okay, yeah. I'm sure Michael yeah. Jackson might be uh, rolling in his brain. Yeah. In the meantime, though, I wish it's more comfortable. Like, I'm still struggling <laughs> to keep on this python. I know, this half, half a dick thing isn't working for me. Yeah. <laughs> It's time for my act. Hey, well, listen now, okay? Uh, tomboy tarts or cookies or whatever you all call yourselves. Huh? It's been very fun, but we should do like some masala chai. Hey, what? You mean you're not doing the double billing? Uh? No, 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 no. Cannot. You guys cannot. Like, you what? Cannot, but but cannot, you cannot, promised cannot. us that, you know, we can yeah, yeah, okay, no, close problem, for you. you know? You know, listen, uh, listen, listen. Maybe maybe sometime you can, but uh, right now maybe your fingers are funnier than you. Like. Huh? You know, so just type it. Uh, type, type, type another blog on me. Type, what? write, write another what? article on me. Okay, fuck. I need, I need, I need another article. Okay, as, as straight sun is not covering me. You get it? You get it right? You get, you get, you get right? I need, I need my chibai to be funny. I need to be out in the market. What chibai? Be... What? What? What the fuck? Hey, sister, no more ladus. Ah, uh, deliver to your house. Okay, sister. Ah, huh? finish. <laughs> hey, no hey, more delivery. Hey, bye bye. Hey, boy, hey, bye bye. Hey, take, what? What? Bye bye. Bye, bitches. Why does the word like "screw you" come to my mind right now? You know why? Because Raven, she just fucking rear-ended us, and it bloody hell hurts. Hey, you know what? I, I'm gonna get rid of this Indian accent. I'm gonna get rid of this Indian accent. I'm gonna do an AIDS test tomorrow, and you know because after watching Dallas Buyers Club and hanging out in this club, Thanks. anything can happen to anyone. Okay. Yeah. Freaking cheated us! And do you think that wait, do you think that the fighter looks really hungry right now at us? What fighter? Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Where are the fighters? What's this? The big chairs from Sharu's chair! One of them is coiling around your legs! <gasps> Whip out your hip hop yoga music now! Okay, okay! Yo, yo, yo! All you sneakers.
snakes are fake. Why are you calling me Cobra? I am a zebra. I am about the yo yo yoga. Get on the floor. Get into a coma. You wrapping around my leg, that ain't cool. I be shaking you off, cause that be old school. Scissoring snake, that's a middle and shake. Scissoring snake, that's a middle and shake. Cause you be coming at ya like a serious butcher. Set you on fire at your funeral party. Yo, yo. Some awesome guests for our best of T-Rod compilation episode. But Shadow Snakes are a killer. <sighs> well, folks, if you enjoyed this episode of Tomboy T-Rod, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher and give us feedback. And of course, just an important announcement to all our listeners, we have moved out of Podomatic because, well, they screwed us up. Big time! So we'll no longer be posting our episodes there. Instead, we'll be hosting our shows on Blueberry on our brand new feed. That's right. On 1st of September, unsubscribe to our current iTunes feed and delete the playlist. And then, resubscribe to our new feed. We'll be telling you how to do it all on our website at www.tomboy-tarts.com and of course, all over our social media. Yes. Check it out on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr. Just like Tomboy Tars. Oh yeah! And if you have any inquiries about advertising, collaborating, or appearing on this podcast or our blog, drop us an email at tomboy.tarts at gmail.com or hello at tomboy-tarts.com. We are everywhere! 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 People, everywhere! 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 everywhere, 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 everywhere. <laughs> Until the next two weeks, y'all. Ciao! And adios, adios, amigos. amigos.